What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Tony from Black Thought. I got a quick video for y'all, but let's get into it. Three towns and cities either built or founded by Black people. Let's go. So starting with number one, we got Benjamin Banneker. So Benjamin Banneker, he's honestly known as the um, kind of like the father of modern science in terms of black inventors and black scientists. He even invented the clock, like the, the actual like tickety talk clock. Um, now, that being said, he is the architect for a lot of the federal buildings in the Capitol, for a lot of the federal Capitol buildings, better said. Um, well, you know, a lot of the stuff on Capitol Hill, like monuments and, and buildings and yada, yada, yada. That's kind of his territory. He kind of did, he did that. In fact, what originally happened was there was another guy, Lefont, I can't not pronounce his name, sorry, I'm not French, who made the plans originally. But then Lefont, I think I'm saying it like, I think that's his name. Lefont was like, you know, I can't work in these conditions. I'm out, peace. Took the plans, everything. And then George Washington was like, oh no, whatever shall we do? And good old Benjamin Banneker was like, hey, listen, George, uh, I got your back, low key. I could I could just reproduce all the plans from my memory because my memory is that good. Uh, oh my God. And then he basically reproduced the plans, made some adjustments, uh, and he was a master surveyor and mathematician. So literally like perfected everything. It's insane. And yeah, that's kind of how a lot of the main building, main federal buildings in DC on Capitol Hill and many main capital federal buildings uh, got, got built during that time, of course. Uh, some of those buildings are burned down. For example, the White House is burned down. Though, technically, uh, Benjamin Banneker did not design the White House. I will say, though, we still built that mother trucker. The White House, we built that. We built that. I don't care what nobody say. We built that. So, and we built a lot of other stuff for free. So, but that's just a rant. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Back to the topic number two. Let's talk about downtown LA, Los Angeles. So downtown Los Angeles was actually built up by a woman by the name of Biddy Mason. Wait, I said that wrong. Not built up, but founded by Biddy Mason. So here's what happened, right? She started off as an enslaved person in Georgia and then got sold to someone in South Carolina, and then got sold to someone in Mississippi. And this person in Mississippi decided that they'd like to move all the way to New Mexico. So Biddy Mason, quite literally, I'm not even joking, had to walk 1,700 miles behind a 300 wagon caravan to get to New Mexico with her new owner. And at the time as well, she was in charge of setting up camp, breaking down camp, cooking, cleaning, doing the laundry, and on top of that, taking care of her three children. I think the, their ages were like 10, I think four, and a newborn. And she did this by herself as an enslaved person walking hundreds of miles a day. That in and of itself is just mind boggling. But let's get back to the story. So anyways, New Mexico. What ended up happening was he then, the owner at the time, then wanted to move to California. But once he got to California, or basically he was entering California, there was this guy who was like, hey man, don't go in here if you have slaves because in California, that's illegal. They will take them from you. And the owner at the time didn't listen. He was like, I don't care. They ain't gonna take my people, it's whatever. So they went into California, settled in California. And then by the time that it was, he started getting suspicious that they were gonna take, the uh, police were gonna come in and take his slaves, uh, his enslaved people, the, there was another, another guy, I believe the name of Owens, something Owens, who was romantically involved with one of Biddy Mason's daughters, had prevented the owner from leaving California to Texas, which was a slave state, and decide and he, like I said, he prevented from leaving, and then called the police and said, "Well, I guess not called. What, I don't know what they did back in the day. His messenger pigeon, something like that, threw rocks with a, with a notepad on it. I don't know." 
Anyways, uh, no, I probably sent a letter. I don't know why I'm being so dramatic. Anyways, though, police came and freed all the people. Uh, kind of, sort of. People had to sue to say that they were free. So Biddy Mason sued. But see, Biddy Mason had learned a lot on the road and during her time as an enslaved person and became an excellent midwife. I mean, like, a phenomenal midwife. If you don't know what a midwife is, it's basically someone who kind of, not necessarily, not necessarily like a babysitter, more like a helps with babies in terms of delivering them and caring for them in the early ages. But I, I, she more so focused on the delivering part of it. Um, anyways, so working as a midwife nurse, she was saving money and money and money and money. And once she reached $250 in savings, she started buying land like crazy. She bought land and bought land and bought land and bought land. And then on her land, she built up hotels. She built up different uh, uh, commercial buildings and all kinds of stuff. She even bought a few homes. All, I mean, well, built up a few homes, all on the land that she owned. And eventually, all of that land she owned and all those buildings she built and everything that she had formed into downtown LA, which is now a poppin' financial district where a lot of money cycles through. That was all thanks to Biddy Mason. So if you live in LA, congratulations to you. You live in a poppin' town thanks to a black woman. Number three, uh, Chicago. You may have known Chicago, but regardless, I'm still gonna tell you. So Chicago, it was done by none other than Mr. DuSable. So not too much is known about DuSable, at least maybe, maybe my memory's off, but not too much is known about him. However, well, when I say that, I mean specifically before he got to Chicago. However, once he got to Chicago, a lot more becomes known about him. <laughs> so in Chicago, he kind of, he founds the city and he, he starts to settle on that land, right? At the time, there were Indian tribes uh, nearby. I don't think on the same land he particularly settled on. However, it, it still was land that did have some form of Native American occupation and in and, and some way, shape, or form. But I'm not really sure how to put it through other than that, but I want to make sure that I acknowledge that. Now, as I was saying, he started on the land and he started building a bunch of stuff, right? So he built, I mean, docks, he built stores, he built his home, he built all kinds of stuff, like by himself with them hands. Okay, maybe not by himself. Eventually, people started coming through and coming through as it became a more as it became a city where, you know, stuff can happen. You know, once once you have a dock, once you have a pier, once you have that kind of place where uh, stuff can travel through, it's game over. It's game over. For that's like a it's an instant way to become a poppin' city. It's just how it happens. So he did that and it became a poppin' city. Everybody started going there. He was kind of like the originator of the city. He, he definitely founded it. And in the, in the, in the case of the other two people, Benjamin Banneker, he built up DC. Biddy Mason founded slash built up LA, downtown LA. And in the case of DuSable, built up Chicago. So those are the three cities built up, founded by black folk. Um, there are a few more places, like for example, well, California was not built up by black folk or found by black folk, but California is named after a black woman uh, named Queen Califi Ca Cal Califia C L A. No, sorry, C L I F A F I A. Jesus, my spelling is horrible. So, but there are like places like that are all around, all around. So, yeah. If you enjoy, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you in the next. Peace.